Sober or drunk, I drive a hard bargain. So do I. Could you do me a favor and put that mail on the table? Thank you. I think I must have seen you somewhere. Somewhere since we left Stanford. Wait, that's it. You're Tony, Tony Wendis. Must have been 20 years. Well, what a coincidence. Yes, this calls for a special drink. Thank you, cheers. So what are you doing nowadays? Oh, this and that. I deal in property. I don't follow tennis very closely. Are you still, uh, are you still playing? No, I've given it up. I should say tennis gave me up. Well, what are you doing now? Oh, I'm wandering about. My wife is sitting on a nice bundle. Otherwise, I wouldn't be blowing $7,000 on your car. That's $8,000. She seems to be taking pretty good care of you. Not quite. A while back, I realized she didn't love me anymore. I'm not the jealous type, but one day I decided to follow her. She went to visit an old school friend in the Alberta Arts District. You could see them through the window. Cooking spaghetti. You know, it's funny how you can tell when people are in love. I realized in that moment that I'd taken her for granted. I went for a walk. I began to wonder what would happen if she left me. I got used to a certain standard of living. I can't remember ever being so scared. I dropped into a little bar for a drink, thinking all kinds of things. I thought of killing her. I even thought of killing her. Mm. I like that idea better. When I got back, she was sitting right where you are now. Well? Well, as things turned out, that spaghetti night had been sort of a going away party. The boyfriend got a job writing Twitter copy for some ad agency in Brooklyn. Was he from there? <laughs> yes, well, Newark. Afterward, there was little notes and gifts in the mail. She got rid of it all except one Mother's Day card of all things. That made interesting reading. Why are you telling me all this? Because you're the only person I can trust. Anyway, the letter stopped and we lived happily ever after. You know, it's funny to think that just a year ago I sat in that dive, actually planning to murder her. And I might have done it. I hadn't paid for something that had changed my mind. Well, what did you see? I saw you. Well, what was so odd about that? The coincidence. Only a week before, I'd been to an alumni party and we were talking about you how you'd been court-martialed in, during the Gulf War. We'd all said you'd end up in jail. Well, thanks very much for the drink. That's all very interesting hearing about your matrimonial affairs. I think you won't be wanting that car after all. Don't you want me to tell you why I brought you here? Well, yes, I think you should. It was when I saw you in that pub. Suddenly, everything became quite clear. All I needed to regain my independence was an alibi. Then I saw you. I followed you home that night, and I've been following you ever since. Why? I was no, hoping I sooner or later I might catch you at something and be able to... Blackmail me. Influence <laughs> you. You change your name to Adams. Yes, I got tired of Swan. Is there a crime in that? No, no. None whatsoever. In fact, there was nothing really illegal about you. I got very discouraged. And then I tailed you to your new lodgings in Alameda. There, Mr. Adams became Mr. Wilson. Mr. Wilson left somewhat better off for a brief encounter with poor Ms. Wallace. She was in love with you, wasn't she? I suppose she thought you grew that mustache to please her. Poor Ms. Wallace. This is all very interesting. Go on. Well, July, August. September. Poor Ms. Van Dorn, but her tastes are so expensive. Maybe that's why you've been trying to sell her car behind her back. Maybe I go to the police and tell them all that you told me tonight about your trip to Hawthorne and watching them cook spaghetti and all that crap. They'll assume you followed her. Me? Why should I? Why should I steal that letter? Your fingerprints are all over it now. 
It'll be a straight case of your word against mine. And who are they going to believe? A loyal husband with no record, or someone with your history? You're a real genius, aren't you? Oh, no. I've just had time to think things out, put myself in your place. That's why I know you're going to agree. What makes you think I'll agree? The carrots, the sticks. Tell me about the carrots. $50,000. For murder. Murder? For a few minutes' work. As soon as you're done, I'll pay you off. Here's a deposit. $5,000. Where did this take place? Tomorrow night. Tony, I can't. It That's has I have to, to, think to about be this. tomorrow night. Where? Right about where you're standing now. Hello, darling. What's going on? How's it going? And this is where you're going to wander around. It's really a terrible play. I want to go right now. Let's see, it's right. It's probably the writer you need to smack. Hey, uh, just a moment. I think there's someone at the door. Psst. You want me to see through that window? Sorry. False alarm. I don't think so. By the way, Meredith called and wants us for dinner on Wednesday. You've got something on the calendar and I can't read it. Looks like... Clyde Connor. Who's he? Another one of your boy toys? That's right. I'm glad we don't have to go to Meredith's vegan gluten free hippy dippy fest. All right. Have fun.